This video covers the literary term muse. Be sure to add it to your notes. So what is a muse? Well, in Greek mythology, there were nine muses, and they were the daughters of Zeus, and they were known for inspiring the creative arts, including literature, dance, music, and you can actually see all of them in the illustration to your right. We have Terpsichord, the muse of choral dance and song, Calliope, the muse of epic poetry, Polymphonia, muse of sacred poetry, Euterpe, muse of lyric poetry, and so on and so forth. So you can see all the different things that they inspired. One that's kind of interesting that we don't always think of as entertainment is Cleo, the muse of history. But really, telling history is really a narrative. It's telling a story. So I guess in a sense, it does require some creative effort. Although in history class, you're supposed to stick to the facts. Today we still use the term muse, but we use it a little bit differently. We don't necessarily mean one of the nine Greek muses from mythology, but we use the term to refer to anyone or anything that inspires us. So a muse is someone who inspires an artist to create a work of art, music, literature, dance, and so on and so forth. You actually see this word a lot in pop culture and you can see its influence every day when you look around you. For example, the recent Estee Lauder campaign shows uh, a perfume that is called Muse, and the catchphrase, as you can see, is be an inspiration. Uh, if you're into rock, you might also be familiar with the alternative band Muse, which of course takes their name from mythology. But there are a lot of examples of real life events or people or places inspiring works of art. So for example, in X-Men, Magneto was actually inspired by the real life character of Malcolm X. You see here, this girl's outfit has been inspired by a bird in terms of color and pattern and texture. Jay-Z and Alicia Keys were inspired by New York to write Empire State of Mind. Also in music, Taylor Swift is known for <laughs> vilifying her exes by writing songs about them and she wrote fearless about joe jonas and joe jonas bit back and he was inspired by her to write the song paranoid dr jekyll and mr hyde was a book that actually and a film that inspired two-face and batman and up here this is a screenshot from aladdin aladdin's palace in the Disney movie was actually inspired by the famous Taj Mahal located in India. So as you can see, a muse doesn't necessarily have to be a person. It could be something in nature. It could be a location. It could be a book. Uh, it could be a relationship or it could be a physical place. All different types of things can be muses. One very famous example of a person um, who is a muse was Elizabeth Seidel. And when you are in senior English in 12th grade, uh, you'll learn about her and her famous husband, da Dante Gabriel Rossetti. Uh, he was a famous poet, and he actually wrote some poems inspired by her. And she was also sort of like the supermodel for her time uh, for the Pre-Raphaelites. And she inspired a number of really famous paintings. One of the most famous is by Sir John Everett Millay and it was called Ophelia. And this is supposed to depict um, the death scene of Ophelia in the Shakespearean tragedy, Hamlet. So what does all this have to do with the Odyssey? Well, as you've learned, the Odyssey begins with an invocation. That invocation is a prayer to a muse asking for divine inspiration. In Homer's case, he's literally praying to the mother of all muses, which is memory, all right, cultural memory. So you see he's saying, speak, memory, speak, speak, immortal one of these things, speak and tell the tale once more in his time. So as we saw with invocation, the muse is a person that Homer is appealing to uh, for divine intervention. So let's apply this term to your life. Think about what inspires you. What is your muse or source of inspiration? 
what about that person or that place or that thing inspires you to be creative? 